Hi, my name is Blaze, and today I'll be taking you through some original differential equations and how to solve them with SciPy. We'll focus on nonlinear differential equations, as these are less likely to have some sort of result that we can see or that we would be able to calculate by hand some definitive output. Uh, a lot of nonlinears end up just cycling, and so I'll show that here. I switched from my usual Google Collaboratory platform to Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, my drive was getting a little bit um, clogged up. I'm running low on memory, and I don't really want to pay for more memory. But anyway, so ODEs with SciPy. SciPy is just a library that is fairly recent and fairly new. I, I will link a, an article about SciPy in the description for further reading that was published in February 2020. But essentially what SciPy does is it allows access to a collection of algorithms as a NumPy extension. And so we will also use NumPy arrays and the NumPy library uh, in this video as well. Essentially, it allows for great power to the user to compute higher order mathematical and engineering problems. I'll link the document documentation in the description as well. So these problems might include general integration, root finding, unconstrained minimization, constrained minimization, and numerical integration of ODEs, which is what I will focus on today. So in order to get this, this library that we want for numerical integration, we import scipy.integrate as integrate. That's just the um, what people do. And we also want the numpy library and the matplotlib library as well. ODEs, let's, let's think about an ODE real quick. These are functions that contain one or more independent variables and its derivatives. SciPy uses, SciPy use with nonlinear ODEs is particularly helpful as these may not result in one solution and thus need to be graphed so we can visualize their outputs. Systems of ODEs are most useful when represented in vector form because you know in, in NumPy, uh, we will use them in vector form. So where y is our state function, what's the state of the system, how much of molecule A, B, C, et cetera, et cetera, is in the system. F is a function mapping from the real numbers to real numbers and uh, includes a keyword argument for time, which we will just define as TS down below. And these are just gonna be the time increments we end up reporting to graph. And essentially what we will do is integrate our ODE over time T after receiving our values from the state vector for each variable. This is the correct syntax, integrate.ode int function, initial state, and then the reporting times. And I'll show you how to do all of those below. The result of this will be a, an array of output values where each row is a time increment in the TS. Whoops. And each column are how many variables we will deal with. If we have three variables, there'll be three columns. If we have seven variables, we'll have seven columns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We won't get to seven variables today. Instead, today I will just do some basic introduction that'll complement the, the video I've already done on stochastic modeling. So for this first example, we're just going to draft something simple, a to b at some constant k. k is going to be our rate constant. That's going to be helpful when we, when we find out or when we define our function. So we're gonna, our objective is going to be graph simulation. It's always good to state an objective before we do something. And then we'll, I want to define steps to achieve since this is our first original differential equation we want to integrate over. So we want to convert this equation to an ODE for each variable in the reaction for A and for B. And how we do that is essentially just calculating how fast A uh, accumulates or depreciates, and then similarly for B, how much B accumulates or depreciates based on the functions we have defined. Then we will, we will turn these ODEs into a single vector ODE of the form f of y of t, so we can use it in scipy and numpy. And then we will integrate based on the times and the initial states given. So I will define the times and the initial states later. These would change and you'd get different results with differing original times or yeah, with different initial times. 
So the first thing we need to do, right, is converting this equation to an ODE for each variable in the reaction. Start with A. Well, this is simple for A and B since A just goes to B at some constant K. K is just, to, A is just gonna depreciate. And so really when you calculate the change of amount of a chemical, it's the increasing amount minus the decreasing amount. And so it's, it's not increasing in our system, it's only decreasing. And so we're gonna have zero minus the constant K, our rate constant, times the amount of A to begin with. So once, once, so this will be the depreciation of A. Now the, the accumulation of B is going to be the, the reverse of that. And so we're going to accumulate B at some constant K based on the, the concentration of A. And so you can see that there. They're just, they're, this is pretty simple. And so this is a pretty simple, these are two very simple differential equations. So from these two, we can define a function based on our state function. Uh, so our state function is just the state of the system, A over B in a matrix. So A, we know to be minus K dot A, and B, we, need to, we know is K dot, whoops, this is not A, this is B. Okay, so I fixed that. So right, B is still based on A. It's not based on how much of B there is. B doesn't care how much B it is. B only cares about how much A there is. And so that was just a typo there. Anyway, A over B, and so we plug it in, it's negative K over A, K over A, which is just what we calculated above. And so this is our function F based on our state function. Now we'll go ahead and define the initial state. We'll just put in a boatload of A and zero B. We'll define our rate constant as 0.5, and we'll just start plug-in. So K 0.5, uh, this is our initial value, our initial state. Uh, the function is just what we, what we defined up here. So negative K times Y naught times K times Y naught. Y naught um, being the first value in our vector. And so Y naught, Y zero would be 500 and, or the, the state of A, I should say, and Y1 would be the state of B. But since both of our, our values are based on the state of A at that moment, it doesn't matter what the state of B is. And so we plug in these. And so that's just how we do it. We sliced just the first element of our state function. So then I go ahead and define uh, our time increments that we want to report on. What this np.lin space is, is, is it just defines from the range of zero to 100 and give me 120 equally distant points in that range. We're gonna actually go, actually, yeah, that'll be fine. 120, that, that's fine for now. And then this result will be this integration of ODE um, F Y not T S. I want to store it as a result so that I can show you a couple things. Okay, and so we can go ahead and run this. And then if we print res, we'll get a whole bunch of values. And so exactly we'll get to show exactly we will get 120 values between zero and hundred. So then if I go ahead and graph this, we can see that A depreciates while B accumulates based on what we defined, fairly straightforward over time. You know, in, in one of these, when you, since you, we only have one way this this function could go, we have no we have no choice. Where is my function? We have no choice but to turn all of A into B, and then once it's B, it's a, the B is just going to grow and grow and grow until A hits zero. And so that's what we see. Simple enough, right? Okay, and so for the second one, we're gonna kick it up a notch. We're gonna, I'm gonna try and make an, oscilla uh, an oscillator with, based on three different chemicals. And so I defined A to B being B plus B, defined B to C to being C plus C, and C to A as A plus A. Essentially what this is gonna do is we're gonna gain a B in our first equation, we're gonna lose a B in our second equation, we're gonna gain an A in our third equation, we're gonna lose an A in our first equation, et cetera, et cetera. So basically that we're we're gonna be gaining the same amount as C as we lose, or the same amount of any chemical that we lose, so that I can try and make a and graph an oscillator. 
I, I went ahead and defined our, or changed our K. Uh, you can mess around with this. It kind of is, is cool to see how fast the, the chemical composition has changed since it's only based on the previous since, you're, since we're integrating, it's not based on the previous state, really. I guess it is based on the state function of the previous interval, but unlike stochastic modeling, it was dependent on the exact amount of A, or A, B, and C, and so that we could only convert, or we calculate the probability that one of those molecules turns into something else. Here, we just integrate, we don't care about we don't care about that as much. Uh, and I went ahead and defined our why not as 939 so that I could, so I could, we could visualize some oscillation. Again, 9 referring to our A, B, and C respectively. Uh, and so this, this state function, this function f that we use is just the same thing uh, as our, well, we just plug in all of our A values. So increasing A is based on this minus the decreasing amount of A. Similarly for B, increasing, decreasing. And that's just going to be our change of, of concentration of our three molecules, or three, yeah, three molecules in this case. I went ahead, kept the TS the same, so we could see that, um, and then we run it. So again, we see, we see our res. It's in the form of a NumPy array with three columns, and then the number of rows, probably 120 of 120 rows from 0 to 100. So then if we go ahead and graph this, so one thing I skipped over in the pre previous uh, description is, is I stored the A and the B and the C values with the res. So this res prints out all of these are A, all of these are B, and all of these are C. And so you can store those, or you can, yeah, you can store those, and then you can graph based on that. So I went ahead and do, did that, and what we see is a big time oscillation, right, since we got what we kind of achieved. And so A goes up, A goes down, B goes up, B, C goes down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so if we zoom in on this, if I make my K actually just a little bit weaker, we can see how it oscillates with, with, with itself based on the concentrations of what's in the system. Now, if I were to, say, make the why not overbearing in a way, we would see, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Overbearing in a way, or underbearing in a way, we would see one just conk out. We're not gonna get any B based on our system if I eliminate B entirely, because we defined B to only accumulate when we have at least one B. So if we don't have one B, we're not gonna accumulate more B. Of course, we can mess around with that a little bit more. And so cool. I hope this is uh, helpful in your first maybe integrations of ODEs using SciPy with Python and Jupyter Notebooks. And I will probably come out with a couple more, more complex models because ODEs seem to be things that people struggle with the most, especially in the higher order math classes and um, in graduate classes. Anyway, thank you.